Britt Baker does a promo. Four times now, Soraya has told her she didn't have what it took to be a star. Yes, she says, I've only been on TV for three years. But in those three years, I went from a nervous girl to the confident face of the company. I have never wrestled in MSG, Madison Square Garden, but I've wrestled in Daly's Place, keeping this business alive in the darkest of, darkest of times. Something you'll never know. You came back from addiction and, neck and a neck injury, and I respect that. But I am the heart and the soul and the pulse of AEW, and this is my house. So, pretty much a straight babyface promo. Well, here's the deal. So last week they did the promo, and Saray decides to tell her that you're not only a superstar, you're you're not even a star. And of course, what this is is an invasion storyline. To be honest with you, because Britt Baker is the biggest star in the AW Women's Division, and there is an outsider, the former Page, who was a huge star in WWE that is walking in and saying, this is my house. So if you explain this to some bloke on the street, well, uh, Britt Baker is a de facto babyface in the storyline. And it may not have been that way, except Soraya went out there and basically said, you've never been in WWE, and so, you know, you're not a star. And so, essentially, she really turned herself into the antagonist here. And so when Britt had to do a promo this week, what is she going to say? She's got to respond to essentially a heel promo by Soraya. So we end up getting a total babyface promo. I don't think she was supposed to be the babyface in this feud. And I don't think Soraya was supposed to be the heel. And I have no idea how the crowd is going to react to either of them on Saturday. I mean, they may cheer Brit. They may cheer Soraya. They may cheer both of them. They may boo both of them. You know, maybe there are fans that don't like Brit, and then there are fans that are mad at Saray. I don't know what's going to happen. And on top of that, on top of that, this is our first match in five years, dude. Yeah. Five years, okay? Now, I don't know what she has done in the last five years in the ring. But logic would tell you practically nothing. Why? Well, I thought... She must have largely been cleared when they signed her, okay? But according to the interview that she did, and I mean, maybe maybe I misheard this or maybe she didn't explain it well, but what I got out of it was she wasn't cleared when she was signed, and she was under the impression that she could do a walking, talking, smoke and mirrors match. But then on Halloween, November 17th, 18 days ago, 18 days ago, she got cleared, okay? So if she was not cleared until 18 days ago, that means for all she knew 19 days ago, she was never going to wrestle again. So if that's the case, why would she be in a ring working out, taking bumps, doing the whole nine yards? I don't know if she did anything over the last five years. So we have a, a very weird dynamic going into this match. We have no idea if Saray could do anything in this match. And she noted she has a microscope on her. Boy, does she ever. I don't know how this is going to end up, dude. I don't know how this is going to end up. I think we should cross our fingers on this one here. You know, the other thing, too, is you could see on this show, especially when Soraya came out later, and her promo was essentially, you know, I don't feel like talking anymore. Let's just fight. You could tell that everybody was, was uh, I don't know what the term would be. They were kind of in a state about what happened last week, where she cut that promo and ended up healing herself by talking about how Britt Baker wasn't a star. And you could tell that, like, now Britt's doing a promo to defend herself. Sarai doesn't even want to do a promo now after this. And when that promo was over last week, I thought it was largely really good. Yeah, because I, I thought, thought it was great. I thought she was great. I thought Britt had great fire. I thought Soraya had more fire than I've seen in forever out of her. And, you know, then everyone starts bringing up everything that she said. And you start thinking about it. And you're like, yeah, you know, she probably shouldn't have said that. And she probably shouldn't have said that. But really, at the end of the day, I mean, did any, was anything she said, like... As bad as when they did that MJF storyline where he couldn't wait to leave and go to WWE and he wanted out and he couldn't wait for the uh, 
the bidding war of 24 to see if he could get more money? Like, is that not right? I mean, and that didn't sink the company. I mean, the storyline they did ended up with him getting cheered when he came back because he, you know, he beat the system or whatever. But I mean, it's not like it sank the company. So I, I thought largely, you know, I wouldn't have said half of the things that Soraya said, but to me, it was kind of like, I think we're blowing this a little bit out of proportion. I don't think it's quite as bad as some people are making it out to be, but uh, we are now in a situation, so maybe it is. I totally forgot this story until just now, and it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that I, it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down. And all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. Lot weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.